guys, how's it going? It's Rob, I hope you're doing good. So today I have two really cool guitars in my possession. They are two very similar Gibson 335 style guitars. Obviously they're not Gibsons, they're a lot cheaper. One is a Harley Benton HB35, which we're gonna talk about today. And the other one is an Aria 335 style replica guitar. I'm gonna make a separate video about the Aria guitar because I want to demo them both the same and give each of them a more in-depth review and demonstration. And then I'm gonna make a video where I compare both of them and see how they fare up against each other as two Gibson 335 style guitars, how do they compare. Obviously there's gonna be quite a lot of difference as they're different brands, but there obviously will be quite a lot of similarities as well. The Harley Benton is the cheaper one of the two, the Aria is a little bit more expensive, but price aside, I really think both of these guitars have a lot to offer. So if anybody is interested in Gibson 335 style guitars, but doesn't have a spare 4,000 pounds to buy a Gibson, or some of the more expensive Epiphone models, then this is just a quick look at how some cheaper 335 style guitars look and sound and play. So today we're gonna to talk about the Harley Benton, so let's dive right into that one. So like I said, this is a Harley Benton HB35 in red. It's a HB35CH and I assume the CH stands for cherry. So firstly, this guitar isn't actually mine. It belongs to one of my guitar students. We recently ordered this right either before Christmas or just after Christmas slash New Year. Um, and it turned up on Wednesday, just gone. And he had to wait a little while to get it because they were completely out of stock. Um, I think it was just in the red color that they were out of stock. Maybe they had the other ones, but this one is a popular choice. Um, and I can see why, because it looks pretty damn good. And it's more traditional. When I see these guitars, um, red is often the color that I associate them with. It gives it more of that old Chuck Berry sort of look to it, which is really cool. That's what I like. So anyway, this guitar turned up on Wednesday and he brought it to his lesson. And he's very kindly offered to let me keep it for a week to make a video about, review it, demo it, play it, show you guys how it sounds and how it looks. I've been wanting to get my hands on a Harley Benton for a little while because I've heard quite a lot about them quite a lot of good things. So after all that talk, I've been really wanting to know what the fuss is about. So now I've kind of got my hands on one. I can see why they get a lot of attention. This thing before even plugging it in feels really, really good. It feels more expensive than it actually was. I think he said this guitar, including shipping to the UK from Germany and Toman, cost 160 pounds total, 160 pounds for this. I can tell you straight away by picking this one up. Don't forget, I've recently just got myself a brand new Gibson SG standard. I've got Fender guitars, I've played more expensive guitars. This guitar feels really good. It feels far more expensive than 160 pounds, let me tell you that straight away. Obviously the tag's still on there, I haven't taken that off. That just shows you how new this guitar is. Um, he literally got the guitar, brought it here, and here it is. He hadn't even had a chance to plug it in and have a play. So we plugged it into an amp in the lesson and just checked everything was working, everything was fine, which it was, so that was cool. So yeah, like I said, from the first time getting my hands on this thing, it actually feels really, really good. It's really comfortable, really well painted surprisingly well, like I said, considering how much it was. The most surprising thing about the guitar was actually the weight. Considering it's semi-hollow, it's got the cutaways here, the F-style holes cut out there. So obviously there's quite a lot of wood missing inside. It's bloody heavy. It's not too heavy, but it's still got quite a bit of weight to it, which in my opinion is a good thing. I don't know why, but I always associate the weight of a guitar with how good it is and quality. Maybe I've just got this thing in my head that heavy guitars are made from better woods and better materials in general. Could be wrong, but it feels pretty good to me, so. And um, let's be honest, it looks really, really good. I know that a lot of people were complaining about the original uh, pit guards on the Harley Bentons on this style model because the original pit guard looked like a kidney bean shape. So a lot of people complained about that. They weren't into it. So a lot of people actually take them off. They don't want this um, black pit guard on there so they can take it off. But obviously Tolman, Harley Benton have rectified that and they've made the pit guard more of a traditional sort of triangle shape. I think it looked kind of cool, but I think my student said that he's gonna take it off, which is fine, everyone has a different preference. The second thing that I noticed about the guitar, like most guitar players, when you pick up a guitar for the first time, you check out the action. How high are the strings off the wood? It seems like straight out of the shop, he's done a pretty good setup on this thing. The action seems pretty perfect, pretty spot on. Um, I wouldn't even change it for my personal preference of how high I like the strings to be. This is pretty much it. I can't believe, like I said, for 160 pounds, including delivery, how good this thing feels in terms of string height, the weight, everything. And like I said, it looks really good too. But how does it sound? How does it play? That's what I wanna take a look at today. I'm gonna to plug it in and show you how it sounds on all the different pickups. But before I do that, I just wanna say that my student mainly bought this, not because he's a beginner, because he's actually got a Gibson Les Paul. He bought this because he's interested in learning how to set up guitars himself and how to fix things and swap things out. And he just wanted a cheap guitar to try some um, more mechanical stuff on. So it's a bit ironic that the guitar that he's bought is actually pretty well set up to start with because that means that he's got less to do to it. But maybe you might do other things to it as well. But I think this guitar would be brilliant for a beginner. If you've never had a guitar before and you're interested in these style guitars, then this definitely looks and feels great for a beginner. So how does it sound? Let's take a look. 
So here we go, we've got it plugged in. The jack lead input is on the bottom of this guitar, as opposed to being on the front surface, like on the Aria and other 335 style guitars, which is cool, gives the Harley Benton a little bit of difference. So I've got a basic clean tone on my computer. I've just plugged this one in, and I'm just gonna try the different pickups and play about and show you how each pickup sounds. So let's take a look at that. <laughs> Okay, so that's the bridge pickup. So now let's flick it up to the middle position. Bridge and neck pickup at the same time. How does that sound? Okay, so finally, let's fuck it up to the neck pickup, which is this one, and see how this one sounds. Thank you. 
So there you go, that's how this guitar sounds straight out of the box. With absolutely no alterations in terms of intonation or anything like that, or anything done to the pickups, literally nothing, just straight out of the box plugged in, and that's how it sounds. Like I said earlier, the initial setup of this guitar is actually pretty good. It's not perfect, it will need a bit of a tweak. As I said, my student is looking to learn how to do all that sort of stuff, so this would be a really good guitar for him for that reason. So it's pretty good to start with, but it could be a bit better so he can learn how to fine tune things in terms of intonation and stuff like that. The action's pretty good, but for him, everyone has a different preference of what they like. He might like it a bit differently, so he can either raise it or lower it as he sees fit. But like I said, not only does it feel really nice to, to hold, the string height is good, it actually feels nice to play as well. Even when playing chords, it's really, really comfortable. It's not too thick, don't really know if you can see that on the camera, but these style of guitars can be quite hefty. This one isn't, it's actually really comfortable. It sits at a nice height. I don't feel like I'm reaching my arm over quite a lot to play this massive body. So even if you're a beginner, uh, younger, and you're a little bit smaller than me, then this guitar would still be pretty comfortable for you. I don't really have anything bad to say about it, in all honesty, especially considering the price point, keep coming back to the price. It's pretty damn good. Pretty amazing. I would actually have one of these, I'm not even kidding. I really like the Gibson 335 style guitars and if I could have any guitar, I would definitely get a proper Gibson. But they're a lot of money, they're very, very expensive. So these sort of guitars still appeal to me, especially if they're really, really playable like this one. Other things that I've noticed is the selector switch there is a little bit loose, but it also feels sturdy at the same time. It's very clunky. It doesn't feel like it glides to the next pickup position. You've got to really push it there, which is good, it's what you want. I don't know if you can hear that. So that's a good thing. I'd say the worst thing about this guitar, and it's not even a bad thing, it's just the only thing I've noticed that's actually pretty, not as great as the rest of it, and things that could be improved is the tuners. They're, they're fine as they are, but they do feel a little bit loose, which could affect the tuning of the guitar, or if it could be get knocked quite easily, or I don't know. I'm just nitpicking here really, but these, these just feel like they could be a little bit better. Like I said, my student has a Gibson Les Paul, um, with standard Gibson tuners, and I know that he's wanting to get Grover tuners for his Gibson, locking ones, so he said there'll be a bit of a trickle-down effect, so when he gets the locking tuners for his real Gibson Les Paul, then the Gibson tuners will go on this guitar, which will improve this guitar, um, yeah, and then he'll have some spare sets for maybe a future project, who knows. Um, but that's what he's planning to do with this, and I think that's a great idea. This guitar came with, um, I think it's their own brand of uh, tenth gauge strings. I personally prefer nines, but this doesn't actually feel too bad. My student actually uses eights on his other guitars, so this might actually feel a bit hard for him at first, or a bit unusual when he's so used to light strings and this is these are tens. But I think he said he's gonna put nines on this, so even that will have an effect on the overall tuning and playability of the guitar by just changing the gauge of strings. So curious to know how it sounds and feels when he's when he's done that. I haven't yet tried it with a strap to see if there's any neck dive or anything like that. It doesn't feel like they would be because it feels heavier this side, to be honest, than this side. Um, so I'm not really expecting there to be any neck dive there. The tone and volume control switches seem very, very sturdy. Very, very, when you turn them, they don't turn really, really quickly. They don't spin. Um, there's quite a bit of actual moving them yourself involved, which is good, it's what you want. Overall, I can't really think of anything else that there is to say that's bad. I'll put the specs up on the screen. The specs will be in the description anyway because I don't really know them off the top of my head. In terms of the wood on the guitar, the fretboard is actually a wood called Blackwood. I don't believe I've ever tried it before on any of the guitars, so this is my first time having a go of a Blackwood guitar fretboard. Um, doesn't feel too bad. It felt a little bit scratchy at first, um, a little bit rough against um, the fingers when doing some bends and stuff like that. It felt like they were scraping up rather than sliding up. Um, but that could just be because it's brand new and it's not been played yet. So I think once my student has had this guitar and played it quite a lot, it'll feel different still. So let's check out what this guitar sounds like with a bit more gain. So there you go, that's how this guitar looks, how it sounds, how it feels, how it plays. Don't have anything bad to say against it, in all honesty, other than the tuners could be a little bit better. The intonation could be improved slightly. The overall setup could do with a tweak. That's about it, 160 pound guitar. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this little demo of the Harley Benton HB35CH. 
I really like this guitar and who knows, maybe I'll get my own in future. So next I'm going to be reviewing and demoing the Aria 335 style guitar. This one also isn't mine, this is my brother's guitar and he's let me borrow it for a demo so I can then demo this one and then compare it to the Harley Benton. Uh, this one was a little bit more expensive out of the two like I said so tomorrow or whenever I get a chance I'm going to see how this one fares up with the Harley Benton. And does that extra bit of money really make much difference? Let's wait and see, let's see how they sound, how they compare. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for a video about this guitar and eventually a video of both of them together. So if you like this video and haven't subscribed yet, then please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave me a comment to let me know what you think, and hopefully I will see you in my next video. So thanks for watching.